maldigestion is not the same as malabsorption. Maldigestion is basically impaired digestion of proteins, fats, starches, or carbohydrates. Malabsorption, on the other hand, is impaired ability to absorb the nutrients from those foods. In addition, there are varying degrees of malabsorption between protein, carbs, fats, and micronutrients. In extreme cases, you can have complete destruction or atrophy of the microvilli in your intestines, resulting in irreparable damage. Protein malabsorption can lead to muscle wasting, soft tissue damage, liver and kidney problems, edema or puffy skin, poor skin, hair, nails, and an increased risk of infections. Now, if you're not absorbing fat appropriately, you're going to see symptoms of dry skin, possibly rashes, hair loss, fat-soluble vitamin deficiencies like vitamin A, D, E, and K, and then hormone dysfunctions. On a scale of 0 to 10, with 10 being the most severe digestive function somebody could have, malabsorption is absolutely a 10. Fortunately, most digestive problems are not due to malabsorption, but maldigestion, and this usually gives rise to symptoms such as constipation, bloating, fatigue, diarrhea, and stomach pain. Now, the most common culprits that are driving maldigestion are going to include dysbiosis, which is an imbalance in your microbiome, digestive enzyme deficiencies, such as stomach acid or bile acids, and then IBS, which could be brought on by immune dysfunctions or food intolerances. If you have maldigestive issues, start with foods that support healthy gut function, including things like high fibers, uh, fermented foods, natural antimicrobials like apple cider vinegar, garlic, and onions, and then you've got superfoods like berries, avocados, and olive oil. Finally, if you have digestive issues, you should absolutely always start with avoiding foods that you know are going to cause damage. This would include things like highly refined processed foods, fried foods, sugar, alcohol, grains, and milk.